Australia. They talk about Melbourne, four seasons in one day. You might get them all. Now, launching a large boat can be difficult, but it's only as hard as you actually make it. I've been doing this for years, and the more you do it, like they say, practice makes perfect, the easier it gets. It's all about using the momentum of the engines to help you out. So, motors are in gear, that'll hold me on the trailer so I can detach. So, I'll remove the safety chain. Now, my winch is actually loose, you can see, but it's being held up by the momentum of the engines. I'll let that off the floor. And. I'm ready to rock and roll. A little bit neutral, reverse, here we go. Well, this is one of the things I love about Melbourne so much. You get some of the best food, the best coffee, the best sporting arenas in the world. A couple of million people, there's literally one other car at the car park today. How good is that? You see I'm wearing a life jacket this morning, that's because technically I'm on this boat alone and it's Victorian law that you've got to wear a jacket. But I won't be alone for long. I'm about to head across Port Phillip Bay to Queenscliff, pick up a mate, and today I've got a mission. I want to catch Southern Calamari, King George Whiting and Snapper in the same day on Port Phillip Bay. I made it across to Queenscliff Harbour. This is Aaron Hapgood. Now, Aaron, when I saw this coffee in her hand this morning, I knew I made a good decision going fishing with you, but well, are there any fish? Well, you're a bit soft, so I thought I'd grab you a coffee to warm you up a Thank bit. Thank you. But there's plenty of fish going on at the moment. So we've got slack water at 8.30, and of course, Paul's on time. So we're probably half an hour late, but the slack water's in about 30 minutes. We're gonna jump on, get some squid on the end of the type. We've got the squid eggs at this time of the year. Yep. And then we're gonna push up the bay, and there's plenty of whiting up there, from small right through to big. Just gonna mix through them and uh, hopefully get a nice feed of fish. All I can say to that is, cheers, big ears. So there we go. So what we're doing here is a patch of eggs. Now this time of the year, the squid come down to the southern end of the bay and they lay their eggs all in the grass beds here at Queenscliff. Now what we're going to do is anchor up on them. There's no one else fishing. I've got a mate, Tony, here and that's it. Now when you're drifting for them, there's people drifting, you don't anchor on them. It's just a bit of respect. But because we're gonna anchor together, we're gonna pop on them. And that's basically the squid are gonna sit on top of them, protect their eggs. And hopefully Paul and I are gonna have a day out catching these fish. Put this bigger dory on in redhead, that's the one that's going to do the job. Got him on. Nice, mate. Well, I have not even got a jig in the water yet, Aaron. You haven't even got a jig in the water, and I told you to hurry up. But all I even offered you this rod. You did, mate, but you know what? You're a guest on my boat. I'll take that. And that's a very, very solid squid. Well done, look at that. Oh! Now, you're gonna tell me that that is an average size squid for this area? Just under average. Just under average, you <laughs> it's know still what? a beautiful squid. All I'm seeing is panko crumbs and a little bit of oil. Well, the thing with these little ones, Paul, they're much better eating fish than those big ones. And I don't know if that's because I'm a bad cook or what it is, but these little guys are absolutely fantastic to eat. They're easier to cook and uh, yeah. You know what? Mm. You're right, it tastes pretty good. Extra salt. It's a shamey squid. Interesting fact, at 1,930 square kilometre surface area, Port Phillip Bay is the largest enclosed sea in the entire Southern Hemisphere. Oh, um, just a 
yellow fin tuna or a squid, mate? <laughs> That's a good one. Well, you've either got your drag really loose or it's a good one. No, I actually just backed it off a touch, but this is a big squid. And you just ring out in the boat, and sometimes you just got to get right on the spot, don't you? Yeah, because we're on the slack water, and of course, Paul was late this morning, so we uh, we missed the slack. No, when you said slack water, I thought you meant I can be slack. Oh, mate. it was probably pretty much uh, explains you. But uh, exactly. no, we uh, slack water come along, but so as the water tide was changing, we were sitting on top of them, but the tide kicked in, the ebb tide, the outgoing tide. We swung around, and uh, all of a sudden, we had to move the boat, and we're on to them again. Well, this is a solid squid. And when these eagle rods first came out, I've got to say, I thought, oh, what's the big deal? But when you get these big squid, the power makes a massive difference, doesn't it? Especially in these tidal waters as well. Oh, I couldn't agree more. In these strong tides, you need that nice long rod. And he's on top there. It is a big, big squid. And it's amazing. These things come in the bay, they reproduce, and they're such a great target fish because they never live to more than a year. So it doesn't matter how many you take, the eggs are already there, and you're not going to put a dent in the resource. This thing, it could be the Kraken, it's that big. Well, that's a good size big one, as my friend Eric would say. Well, it is, and what we often do, we don't often uh, net the squid down here. We like to grab them, especially in these smaller boats. And we literally grab them by the back of the head here, just like that. <laughs> and I've just popped an absolute mouthful, and I'm not even going to apologise because I've copped it worse than you now, guys. that is a very large Southern Calamari. We're going to wipe the water off the lens, then we're going to have a good look at this thing. My poor cameraman. You get that on the big jobs. <laughs> So that big tentacle down here, mate, that's called the candle. Yep. And oh, look at that ink coming out of him. Why has this guy only got one? Because what they're doing is they're spawning at the moment. So these eggs that you've seen on the ground here, all these spawning marks here like this, he's a pretty rugged squid. And if you feel him, he's been beaten up. So when they're spawning, they're fighting, they're really aggressive. And if you can see here, he's actually missing his other candle. You can just see it in there. Yep. But basically, he's missing it. He's had a bit of a tough life. I don't know how much longer left this fella's gonna have, to be honest with you. Uh, I know, about three seconds. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Less than that. <laughs> so you did cast back on the uh, young bloke. So what I did, I saw the young fella next to us catching one, and I was a little bit dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> you? Dodgy? <laughs> I Never. Uh, accidentally casted my squid jig behind his because squid follow each other, so I'm gonna say it's smart. So you literally other. just cut a young boy's lunch. Now he got his one and I got his <laughs> one, he was gonna catch after it. <laughs> that is disgraceful, but I like the way he thinks. <laughs> He's a good squid too. So a bit of an interesting situation here. We've got wind against tide. Now yep. that only happens in the lower reach of the port for the bay and obviously other areas of the country where the tide is stronger than what the wind is. Yep. So we've actually got the wind coming up the back of the boat and it can be a bit daunting for people. It's probably one of my first oh that's a nice one. That's a good one. It's probably one of my first rules when I'm teaching someone how to fish down here is try and get the wind and tide in the same direction. And tell you the honest truth, the weatherman's are a little bit wrong today. It was meant to be only about five knots. It's probably a bit more than, it's just eased off to about 10 now. And the young boat just landed his squid. <laughs> it's eased off a bit. So we're at, the boat's come around with the tide. And another good thing to have when you are fishing down here is a, is a parachute or a drone you chuck over the side and it grabs you and pulls you around. Now we're probably gonna have to do that up at St. Leonard's, but up down here at Queenscliff, the tide's strong enough to pull the stabby around and uh, I'm gonna pull this squid in. I got a question, did you bring the parachute or the drone? Organised. <laughs> hey, we're catching fish, does it really matter? You want me to grab yours as well, Paul? That'd be good. If you could. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> That's your one. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, maybe don't point him at me. Well done. Interesting fact, with a shoreline of 333 kilometres from Point Lonsdale around to Point Nepean, Port Phillip Bay is 35 times the size of Sydney Harbour. All right, Paul, looks like we're going to be on the board for our first one. It is a King George, is it? It is, yep. The tide's started now, so they should fire up with this tide. Good work, it's a whiting. And that there is me trying to make a mess of myself. And that there's our first one. Happy days. We're using a smorgasbord of baits in these whitings today. How good is this? Little calamari strips we've cut out of the tube. These are the candles. They're my favorite whiting bait of all time. Then you've got some sandworm, cured by Frank Lido in Lakes Entrance, and the old pippy, they call them cockles in South Australia. Whiting love them. Be a bit, a bit bigger size this one. That's a nice fish. 
Here you go, Paulie. That's a good one. We're chasing. Well done, Red. Well done. Do you put all the whiting on your side of the boat, mate? Well, when you're as talented as me and as smart as me, <laughs> you'll catch big ones like that. Oh, it's a monster! <laughs> We'll throw that one back, I think, Paul. I think so. Nice fish. The old King George whiting. I've been to King George Sound in WA, and it was in 1829 when naturalist and zoologist George Cuvier named this species. So back to the fishing in a second, but first, Red, tell us what happened to you when you were 16 years old. I was 16, I actually had a heart transplant, Paul, so uh, it wasn't much fun uh, back then when I was 16, a bit hard for the parents and that. But long story short, I had a narrow valve that went on for 12 months of getting dizzy spells. I finally got, uh, went to the doctors and got it all checked. They uh, did a valve repair, um, which went really, really well. But then a few hours later after in ICU recovering, I ended up having um, a, a little heart attack. One went for half an hour and the other, well, I was out for half an hour. I was actually nearly, pretty much dead. And then I had another one that went for an hour straight after that, after they got me back and basically a surgeon hand pumped my heart for that whole hour to bring me back to hook me up to life support. Unfortunately, that right side of my heart was completely dead, so I needed a transplant. And three months later, while waiting on life support, just shy, I ended up uh, getting my transplant and I couldn't be happier now, living the absolute dream, I'm happy to say. And catching plenty of fish, organ donation, it is so important if you ever thought about it, here's a good reason to give it a go. Lost my niece over 10 years ago, and the fact that we actually got to give her organs to other people, it made us feel so much better about what happened. And this is living proof. fish? Yeah, he's playing up. You feel whiting always, you know you know when you're going to whiting because they duck the head down into that tight they and hold the under the boat. They love the lunge. So they always stay down here where if you get a toady or a flathead they usually come up to the top. This is a pretty nice size fish here, Paul. That's, oh that's solid. Now that fish is probably around what 38 centimetres? Yeah 38, yep. And in Port Phillip Bay that's what you consider a really good quality whiting. Yeah and then this, especially up where we're fishing off St Leonard's here, that's a really nice fish for up here. We've got a few smaller ones, Hopefully we get a few bigger ones, but down the bottom end of the heads where the tide runs that bit faster during the winter months, we get some absolute stonkers up to sort of 50, 50 plus centimetres. That's a horse. I'm quite happy with that. Well, I come across from Mount Martha to Queenscliff in search of whiting and squid. Mate, you delivered. Oh, there's plenty of fish today. Whiting, really nice whiting and some really nice calamari as well. Now, you're the only bloke I know who fishes more than me. If people want to follow you and catch more fish, what do they do? You can head to saltguide.com.au and also on Facebook. And basically, it's an online tutorial teaching you guys what we did today and plenty more about fishing. Now, I'm about to go out and hit up the snapper. Can you help me with a spot? Like I said, head to saltguide.com.au and you'll probably find yourselves a couple of marks. Good luck, Paul. Yeah, thanks. So hurtful. No way, look at that. There is a school of King George whiting. That is mind blowing. I don't know that I've ever seen free swimming King George. And in a marina, you actually see them, they're feeding. That is unbelievable. I might throw a few pillies in and see if I can get them to eat. How good is that? We've just checked on the GPS. We're 32.4 kilometres from one of my favourite snapper fishing haunts in about 16.3 metres of water off Mount Martha. So, gonna head up there, see if we can find a few big reds. Well, it's time to scale my fish, so I put them in the whiting tumbler bag, put this thing out behind the boat. Luckily I have a producer who's driving and you literally want to sit that on the edge of the wave. Just wait till it comes up out of the water and it'll actually take the slime and the scales off the whiting. There it goes. And see how it starts to spin? That is working just beautifully. I've been going for about five minutes. Come to a stop and pull this little baby in. The great thing about this bag too, it actually has a float on the back. So if you happen to break a rope, which I know some people have in the past, not on this, but on cheaper models, you actually get your fish back. Now, there we have a bag of fully de-slimed and de-scaled whiting. I'll put them in the esky, knock the fillets off later. I'm just sounding for fish as I come up close to my mark. And basically my mark's a GPS mark where I've caught fish before. It's a bit of good bottom. 
What I've got in my hand here is my snapper marker boy. As soon as I mark fish, I throw this over the side. Basically, the sinker goes to the bottom, and that float tells me exactly where I sounded the fish, so I can then anchor the boat accordingly. So I've marked up a few fish, but I'm looking for three or four fish really tight and on the bottom. When I find them, this is going out. So the buoy's out, what I'm doing now is just doing a few circles. I'll run back over the buoy, see if those fish are still there. There's some fish coming through here as well. It just gives me a really good point of interest so I know what's going on. So after dropping my anchor buoy, I actually did a bit of a search around. I found two patches of fish just north of it. So I went up about 250 metres, dropped the anchor. Plenty of rope out today because it's pretty rough. I've now got my four lines out and it becomes a waiting game. Here we go. That's what we wanted. That is our first hookup. And you can tell we've got a snapper because the rod tip's actually going whack, whack, whack. And that's amazing. We just threw some burl in and we're actually watching. We had a camera on the bottom. We were actually watching Flathead come in and eat the burly. And we're sitting up there watching. Next thing we hear, and this is what you just love when you're a snapper fisherman. Now, not the greatest day for fishermen. We've got about 15 knots of subtle at the moment, but a great day for snapper. It's just a matter of continually putting baits out, burling, and eventually the fish will come. So that's important when you do hook a snapper because they're a schooling fish. Always keep an eye on the other rods because quite often you get that second bite. And this is on a pilly. Now, I cannot tell you how scungy this pilly was. I was about to make a move and I thought, I'll bang it out one more time. And next thing it just loaded. And uh, this is 100% a snapper. You look at that rod tip, just keep an eye on it and you will see this whack, whack, bounce. It is so characteristic. And it's that big head shaking from side to side trying to throw the hook. And I reckon this isn't a bad fish. It's always good when they take string. So I've got colour. It is a beautiful snapper. Look at that. Just love these things. Look at those blue fins. They come out of the ocean, just electric blue fins. Look at that. Oh, I just love snapper. He's about three kilos. I'll get him in the boat and I'll give you a closer look. So just reach for the well-placed net. Important thing here is just take your time, bring the fish's head towards the net and turn around. There we go. What a magnificent fish. And I feel very, very blessed to live in this incredible part of the world. Look at that guy there. He's probably nudging three kilos. Fat as, and he is in Port Phillip Bay at this time of year to spawn. Look at that. Check out the blue eye line above his eye. Check out those magnificent blue fins, the blue dots through there. That is just so good. As I said, not perfect conditions for fishing, but perfect conditions for Port Phillip Bay Snapper. My rig for Port Phillip Bay Snapper, 15 pound Maxima, black rolling swivel, then 25 pound instant fluorocarbon leader. Then a little bead, just for the sake of it. What I like to do then is run my 5.0 VMC Suicide, a small ball sinker, and then a second 5.0 VMC Suicide. By the time that's all rigged up beautifully, the sinker actually sits on the side of the bait, helps you get down, but doesn't slide back up the line and cause you grief. I've been using this for over 25 years, and I'm here to tell you, it works an absolute treat. Well, you snap and predominantly take the bait head first. So what you do is get your two hook rig. I like to slide that back hook all the way through the fish. And on a bigger bait like this widening, I'll actually go back through again, about two centimetres up from him. And then I'll pull it through and go through the third time, just helping to stitch this whole bait up as I run that hook back out the other side. Then I get my VMC circle. I go in the side of the head there and I want to come back out through the gill case. That's the hardest part of the fish. And that's going to keep my hook in perfect place. Look at that, sit nice and proud. Pull that line up, then get our second hook, which is down the back here. I actually run my little sinker between the hook and the other hook, go in that same hole where we started, straight back with that 6-0, and then two half hitches on the tail. When I do that, you can see that bait is perfectly secured, lots of hooks showing, and if you get a good hit, it's a pretty good chance you're going to set the hook. So important just to keep the burly up to these fish. I just use a cup, give that a flick, 
and it'll slowly make its way down. I tend to find, put Burley in, within five minutes you get a bite. Bit of weight there. It's had a bit of an inquiry on this end rod, but the boat's yawing, so I'm just gonna leave it, and the fish will get itself. Oh, yep, 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 look at this, look at this. I think that's an inquiry. Oh, that's a solid fish. That's a real solid fish. Look at that line coming off the spool. This is solid, this is nice. And I was just about to make myself a cup of tea. I think I'll put the milk down. Oh, yeah, nice. And this is such a cool fishery. There's one boat going past now, but I have not seen another boat in the last two hours. And there in the background is Melbourne. Massive city, the second biggest city in Australia. They reckon in 20 years it'll be the biggest city. And I'm pretty much out here by myself catching these beautiful snapper. I'll just get that over there. And this is unusual for me. I'm only fishing four rods today because that's the law in Victoria. But normally if I've got Christian Jet out with me, and this is what we do on our day off, we fish eight rods and we share it around, we work them together. So it's a bit bizarre and it's really kept me on my toes because I've got to make sure. Oh, I've got to make sure that I've got baits on the whole time. And these pillies get absolutely devastated by, oh, look at this rod here, it's thinking about it. Absolutely devastated by all your flathead and smaller pinkies and stuff. See, this rod could go here. See how it's starting to bend? But you don't want to do anything until it physically loads. And it's such a great feeling. Well, it's thinking about it. <laughs> it's such a great feeling when you look out and you just see that rod just go, 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 and then drag comes off the spool. I love this so much. And these are just beautiful outfits. This is Maxima 15 pound mono. I love Maxima. I love mono in Port Phillip Bay because braid really is hard work and there's no benefit. These rods are Shimano Nano Series, rated 20 pounds that I actually developed with the team at Shimano. I just love that, that big soft tip. Seven foot two, it's actually seven foot four. So you can get around motors, hold the fish away from the boat. He's going to the boat now. And the little salary goes to 6,000. I've had these for two years and I don't treat them all that kindly. As in, they just get a hose down when I get home, but they go so well. Oh, this is a solid fish. This is the fish you come to Port Phillip Bay for, and he just wants to sit under the boat. He's gonna pop up any minute. And what a day we've had to go down, fish with red, catch monster calamari one after the other, then a bag full of King George whiting, make a move and smash some snapper. I love this place so much, and that's why I live on a shoreline. You know, colour very soon. And it's really important here, that fish will take a lunge. There you go, see that? I've got my drag perfectly set. If I tighten that drag, in the old days, some people thought they had to get aerodite and lock that drag off. That is what is stopping my line from breaking. So it's just a matter, letting the fish go when he wants to go, lifting when he wants to lift. Look at this fish here, it's solid. He's not ready yet, and I've got a shag. He wants to watch. It's all happening, Richie. That's a beautiful fish. Look at that. November is snapper time on Port Phillip Bay. And that's a solid snapper. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. I just love these guys. Now he's very well pinned and he fought extra hard because where that hook is. And that's the reason you use two hooks. Now I'm just going to take my time here. I'm just going to watch that second hook. And come on, mate, come on. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, that's a male fish. Look at that for a fish. Tell me that doesn't get you excited. And look at this stuff coming out there. That's his little bits of boy business. He is in here to make more snapper for the future. The females lay eggs, they're serial spawners. They like about 18 degrees. They'll spawn over a period of three to four weeks to give the eggs the optimal chance. He comes along and does his thing. And seriously, I love these things. There is something about snapper. And if you've ever fished, you'll understand exactly what I mean. Well, I hope you enjoyed around Port Phillip Bay in a day. This morning, I set out with three missions in mind. Big Southern Calamari, beautiful King George whining, and some nice snapper, we achieved it all. How good is this magnificent part of the world?